Thank you um, for coming here today. Um, we really appreciate it. I want to get right into it because I have a lot to ask you. So first and foremost, can you tell me a little bit about how you got involved in the Congress to Campus program and why you chose to come to Elon today? Well, the retired former members of Congress uh, have an association and uh, obviously the members like to stay engaged uh, uh, from time to time, not only with each other, but doing some things that they think are worthwhile. And we're hopeful that uh, sharing our views and ideas and experiences uh, uh, might be uh, of value to, uh, to students at uh, colleges and universities across the country. So now, obviously, the big event is 7 p.m. today. Um, what is something that you really hope that our students get out of that, and why do you think they should care? Well, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to spark some interest and, uh, and concern about uh, what's going on in our country, about government in particular. Uh, I think without question, uh, obviously, the, this is the future uh, of our country uh, here, and the responsibilities that they need to assume as, uh, as citizens uh, is, is a great one. And I think it's coming at a particularly important time uh, uh, within uh, our country's history. So uh, uh, I suppose uh, we're, we're hopeful we're going to make missionaries out of all of them. Well, very good. Um, now, can you talk to me a little bit about your career and your life in the public eye and in public service and kind of talk about some of the pieces of legislation that through the years that you feel like are near and dear to your heart and that your pride, your proudest work? Well, I've, there were so many over uh, really a 19-year period. I know it's hard. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely. hard to it's hard to choose among your children, mm -hmm. and uh, but uh, certainly a, a lot of uh, legislation in the agriculture arena dealing with uh, credit and conservation, uh, environmental issues uh, as it applies to agriculture, uh, but also the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. Uh, we had responsibility over that. Uh, did a major reform uh, in that area and changes in the system, which I, I think have withstood the test of time. Uh, but perhaps uh, uh, the one I enjoyed the most, had the greatest amount of, uh, of satisfaction from, uh, was for over about a 10-year period I was involved in the war on drugs, both uh, through the Select Committee on Narcotics Abuse and Control and uh, headed up the task force on drug abuse in the military, but then uh, a broader realm of, uh, of oversight over the entire war on drugs. And we were able to focus on South Florida, and uh, I think the coalition of Democrats and Republicans, uh, senators and congressmen uh, from various committees, we were able to put together a group that I, I think, in fact, uh, shut down uh, much of the abuse that was taking place in the mid-1980s, the so-called cocaine cowboys of, of uh, South Florida. So uh, we took great satisfaction of that. I think we had a great deal of success with it. So this kind of goes to, as you were saying, you know, that bipartisan work, this kind of goes to my next question for you. Um, from the time that you got into office to, and, or even left office, and now kind of looking at it now, you know, the nation is so divided. How would you compare and contrast the temperature of Congress today versus to when you were in office? Well, first of all, I'd say that uh, certainly the climate in the country is different today than it was during that time. The, the, the people, uh, our citizens, uh, seem to view things uh, in a more adversarial uh, frame of mind than, uh, than they did certainly back in those days. Uh, I think we, uh, today we have more of a, it, it seems like it's a team contest, people uh, wanting to uh, uh, either score points uh, against the other team as opposed to what are we doing to benefit the country. Um, back during that time, I think also there was an attitude uh, by members of Congress that you had to show results if you're going to get reelected. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't have anything to take home and say, look what we've achieved, look at the, the results that we've brought about, look at the problems that we've solved, uh, that uh, did not bode well. Uh, today it seems like it's more of a case of uh, how extreme of a statement can you make, how... Uh, mm -hmm you know, a, a 10 second sound bite or something that's stated on, stated on social media that's extreme, it gets people's attention. That seems to be what wins votes as opposed to results. So now going off of that 10 second sound bite, as you just said, do you think that the media plays a large role in the divisiveness that we're seeing today? Well, I think they do, but uh, again, it's the people who uh, uh, make those shows popular. It's the people that are watching those shows. Uh, that's what people are responding to. And uh, as uh, certainly has been observed uh, uh, years ago, uh, they're in the business of selling soap. 
And, uh, and that soap depends upon getting viewers. And the more viewers you have, the more you can charge for advertisers, the more money that they make. So whether you're talking about individuals who are on radio or television or whatever, who take these extreme positions and make these statements that are shocking, uh, they're there to build an audience and they're there to make money. And uh, yeah, that works against uh, the system, but uh, the people, the country respond to it and uh, that's what encourages them to do it. All right, now I wanna get into a little bit of um, some current events for you. And um, now you released a call to action in 2009 dealing with the affordability of electricity and the need to build power plants to ensure that you know, we don't face power shortages. And you stated that we can't do any of that until we have a plan dealing with climate change. Correct. Do you believe today that the new proposed Green, green New Deal is that plan? No, it's not a plan. It's a resolution. It's a sentiment. It's an idea. I think we're all in favor of, uh, of improving our environment. Uh, not too many people are coming out and saying, I vote against improving the environment. But I do think uh, we are dealing with climate change, and we had common agreement really up until about 2009 that uh, from both political parties that this is a problem that needed to be addressed. Now, that got changed, but uh, uh, I still think that it is an issue. I still think it is a problem. And I think that, uh, that you have to deal with power plants because I was with the electric cooperatives in a fashion that is going to uh, uh, respond to that need. And uh, I still expect that as we move forward, we're going to see more and more uh, uh, emphasis and demand made for cutting down carbon emissions. Well, Congressman English, thank you so much for joining us. I'm really interested to what you see, what I'm really interested to see what you have to say later tonight. All right. So thank thank you, you so much. It's Looking forward to it. Thank All you. All right. I appreciate it. Thanks.